Empoleon was brought back in the Scarlet and Violet DLC, and it came with a couple new buffs. Its ability changed over from Defiant to Competitive, and that's actually a pretty significant change. Competitive doubles your special attack stat for each stat that is lowered by the foe, which opens opportunities for Empoleon to hit like a truck on the special side. It also gets access to the move Flip Turn, which is essentially a water-type U-turn, which allows for super solid pivots, and Empoleon is now back and better than ever. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I've got another super fun match for you. A lot of my games these days I do get from my Discord server. If you'd like to battle or just hang out in the community, go ahead and hit that link in the description to join. We'd love to have you. And if somehow you aren't subscribed to the channel already, go ahead and hit that button for me. It only takes you a second. I promise you won't regret it. And let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the old classic Tauros, and I decided to go with the Vikavolt. I want to get up my sticky web early just to ensure that I can have that speed control, uh, and also I can hit pretty hard with this thing. Now, I go for the sticky web turn one, and it turns out this thing's actually going to go for the Swagger, and for whatever reason, Swagger actually has like an 85% accuracy, which in Pokemon that means 20%, and he definitely misses. I don't know how you miss a Swagger, but it does happen. Now, them going for the Swagger on turn 1 does tell me a few things about what this Tauros is working with. Essentially, I know that it's going to be a Mirror Herb set, but I'm honestly just willing to stay in here, roll for the Volt Switch, knowing it's going to do a lot of damage, uh, and then I should be able to have a Mon in the back that can take care of this thing. So, they do land the second Swagger here, it is going to Mirror Herb that boost, gets a nice little sharp attack boost from me, and Vika Volt's out here with his little duckies flying around, not knowing what the hell's going on. But, luckily, I do break through the confusion, go for that Volt Switch, which does a whole bunch of damage here, and now I can pivot into my best answer to this thing, and that is going to come in the form of the Stone Joiner. Now listen, Stone Joiner is carrying the air balloon here, so he can't hit me with an earthquake. Again, I don't understand. This thing weighs literally like 1,200 pounds. I don't know what kind of balloon Homeboy's holding, but it, it does hold us up enough to where we don't touch the ground. So I'm fine with that, and at this point, I'm just going to go right for a body press. I should be able to take an attack from this thing. Uh, they go for the Iron Head, which is their best possible damage with that earthquake. It is going to pop my balloon, but I'm also going to pop dude's face with these big ass thighs, and that takes care of the Toro. So that's honestly a pretty big threat out of the way. Uh, Stone Toner did basically need to sacrifice kind of all it can do in this match for that, but I'm honestly fine with it because now they go into Scizor. And of course, whenever you're running with a sticky web team, you have to have answers for the hazard control. So I'm thinking this thing's likely going to go for the defog. Now, what I can do to make the best of this situation is actually go into Empoleon, because if they go for the defog, it's going to drop my evasion one stage which then is going to activate competitive and give me a nice little special attack boost, and then Empoleon can pop off. So I go into the Penguin here, they actually end up going for the Bullet Punch instead, um, and that is uh, luckily at least not going to do much. I'm still a good check to the Scizor here, would have been a fantastic to come in on a Defog, but they also have an Empoleon on their side, so they, they know the consequences of lowering stats around here. Also, it could mean that this thing is just an all-out offensive Scizor, likely just with Swords Dance. Uh, regardless, I just go for a Surf here, and they're actually going to bring in the Thunderous. So, I'm able to do about half to that thing, however, Empoleon is super useful for me in this match, and I do not want to take either a Volt Switch or a Thunderbolt, so what I decided to do is actually just go right back into the old Jenga stack, and I figured this thing doesn't have that much use to me here, I can let it go down. Uh, they actually end up knocking out with the Volt Switch, which turns out to be a little bit better, because now they do have to pivot, I can see what they go into, and then I can get a nice little fresh Revenge Switch. So. Uh, the Thunderous is going to be a little bit of a problem for the late game. The thing is just fast. It does not get uh, affected by the Sticky Web. So they tuck it in the back pocket for later. And now they decide to go into Empoleon. So here's where things get interesting. Empoleon is going to get the speed drop from the Sticky Web. However, I notice it actually doesn't get the competitive boost uh, that Empoleon would normally run. So that tells me one thing. This is actually not an Empoleon. And it has to be the Hisuian Zorark instead. So what I can do is actually go into Banet. And what Banet is going to do is essentially just lay himself on a silver platter saying, please go ahead and click Shadow Ball here. I know that you're a Zorark. Um, I saw the tell from the no competitive activation. And now I can go for that Terra Normal, expecting them to go for a Shadow Ball. And it should allow me a nice little free Swords Dance. So there are a few people brave enough to use Banet. And honestly, for good reason. There's a whole lot of better options. But I just like this little homie. So I go for that Terra Normal. I go for the Swords Dance here since we did get the speed drop. We are actually faster than this thing, and the bait is going to work out as we do allow them to go for that Shadow Ball. Of course, it doesn't affect us because now we're a normal-ass doll, and at this point, I can just go for a knockoff. Knowing that I can't Poltergeist, obviously it's normal and Ghost, so I can't go for that, but the knockoff is going to knock it down to the Focus Sash. And hey, Game Freak, hear me out. If I knock off all the way down to the Focus Sash, it shouldn't activate. I, I feel like that would be a fun little addition. But anyway, um, it does end up living that, which allows it to go for an attack here, which unfortunately is going to be the Will-O-Wisp. So 
bayonets, unfortunately, while we do have the swords dance, now we have the our attack split in half. Um, which does suck, however, we, we did reveal this Zorark trickery, and we don't have to worry about this thing anymore, which is amazing. So, I decided to just go for one more knockoff here, they can't really afford to switch out. Um, and Zorark being gone is honestly a huge benefit to me, now I don't have to wonder uh, if whatever they're sending in is actually the Pokemon they're sending in, or it, just no more shenanigans out here, and that's what I'm all about. So, Banette is going to get hurt by his Life Orb and the burn, so we're not having the greatest time, but we're feeling pretty good. I got Banet to at least do something, and now they can go for the free switch. They decide to go into the Thunderous. It's going to be the fastest thing possible because, again, he's just floating on his little cloud above the old sticky web, so he's able to outspeed, finish me off with a Thunderbolt, sadly, um, and that is going to take care of me. So I did have to burn my Terra, which is important to note. However, uh, I feel like it's worth it to at least handle the, the Zorark there. So now I get myself a nice little revenge switch against the Thunderous, which is good because this thing is kind of the most annoying Pokemon they have at this point, and I decide to go into the Sand Slash. So I have a couple different options here. Now, Thunderous cannot switch back in if he comes in on a Stealth Rock, so I figure I could set up the Stealth Rock. However, I go for the knockoff predicting a switch, but they actually just end up staying in. They go for the Sludge Bomb likely being the only thing they can touch me with, and I finish it off with the knockoff here. So while we don't end up getting up the Stealth Rock, we do take care of the Thunderous, which is extremely scary, so we're happy to see it. Also, Sand Slash grabbing himself a kill. And now they are down to three Pokemon left. However, I should be faster than everything considering the Sticky Web is still around. And now they decide to go into the Dawn Fan on the free switch. Of course, this thing does threaten to get rid of those sticky webs with the rapid spin, and I also did lose my my answer to that with the banette. Being ghost type, I can switch into rapid spins, however that thing is gone, and I figure if they want a rapid spin, I'm honestly fine with that. Um, I just end up going for the knockoff here, get rid of the citrus berry, as they're just going to end up going for the stealth rock of their own. So, this is kind of an interesting matchup, because we can't really knock each other out at this point, we can just basically have earthquakes as our highest damage output. And they also have the option of going for that rapid spin, getting rid of the sticky webs. However, that's not going to allow Empoleon to then switch into them and then get its competitive boost. So they end up just going for the Ice Shard here, which does do some pretty decent damage, but I just fire off an Earthquake in return. Essentially, just to get some chip on this thing, it looks like one more Earthquake should do the job, as I did get rid of the Citrus Berry. Um, and I imagine they probably want to leave those sticky webs up just for their Empoleon to switch in uh, and immediately get that special attack boost. So, Sand Slash goes for one more Earthquake here that is going to take care of the Donny Boy. And it looks like I am the better Spinny Boy today. So, Don Fan being gone is amazing. Sand Slash is out here doing the thing. But now, they get a free switch. And, like I mentioned, Empoleon can switch in and immediately get its competitive to activate. However, the reason why I'm still not worried about setting up the sticky web on a team like this is just because... Uh, with Empoleon speed dropped, it's not going to be able to be fast enough to be able to outspeed things unless it's running something like an agility. Um, so it comes in, it is going to activate that competitive like the real one. He is not the freaking Hisuian Zorark. And I go ahead and make the prediction at this point that they're going to go for something like a Terra Flying to avoid the Earthquake. However, they do not Terra, and a knockoff does get rid of its Assault Vest, but it also allows them to finish me off with a Surf. And I really thought they were going to go for a Terra at that point. The Earthquake was obvious. I would have outsped and knocked it out with the Earthquake. But now I find myself in a spot where that uh, it, it did not happen. So I decide to go into the Heracross, and of course with this thing speed dropped, Heracross can easily just outspeed, and then just beat the shit out of him with a close combat. So that's the plan. I figured if they didn't tear it at that point, they probably don't have like a useful option. But they do actually go ahead and commit it at this point, and it turns out to be the Terra Ground. So what that does is it's going to basically get rid of its weakness to my close combat, and now it comes down to does Heracross have the strength uh, to knock this thing out at this range, even without the super effective damage. Unfortunately, it's barely able to live, and uh, after, especially with that special defense drop, a Surf from a competitive boost at Empoleon is going to take care of me. So, the Terra does come out, just not in the way we expected, and uh, that is a little bit scary. So, we do lose the Heracross, however, I have myself a Penguin of my own, and I'm just going to go into this thing, and of course, since that Sticky Web activated, uh, mine should definitely be faster. Plus, with this thing being ground type, I can just flex on him and knock it out with a surf. I did enough chip damage to where easily I can pick this thing off. Um, and down goes the big threat. So, competitive Empoleon's down here all over the damn place and just kind of being annoying. But we take care of it. They also burn up their Terra, uh, so no more surprises in the back. And my Empoleon is actually in a pretty solid position here because their final Pokemon is going to be the Scizor. So one of the main reasons why I've been keeping this Empoleon around is basically because it's my best check to the priority that uh, Scizor has to offer. The Bullet Punch is extremely scary for my team, so 
Alright, I wanted to keep uh, Empoleon healthy here. I go for that nice little Surf, it does a whole bunch of damage as this thing then goes for the Sword Stance here, basically as a last ditch effort. Uh, they don't have any coverage unless they had something like a Brick Break, which I still should be able to take uh, at least one of. But that Sword Stance basically tells me their best answer is going to be the Bullet Punch. And after that plus two, it still is not going to do much uh, to the absolute goat that is the Emperor Penguin here. I finish him off with one more Surf, and that is going to be the end of the match. So that honestly came right down to it. That was a, a super fun match. It's always fun to kind of mess around with this team and uh, have a good time with it. Listen, thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support. Definitely join my Discord server if you would like to kind of be in the community or get some battles. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.